All right, welcome everyone. I'm Lee. I'm a community scientist at BioBus. Welcome to our lesson. I'm calling in from New York, Brooklyn, New York. My name is Savon, and I'm calling in from New York, New York. Hi, my name is Grayson, and I'm calling in from Grand Lodge, Michigan. Hi, my name is Maya, and I'm calling in from New Jersey. Hi, I'm Matilda, and I'm calling in from Brooklyn, New York. Hi, I'm Thorne, and I'm calling from Providence, Rhode Island. All right, welcome everyone. I am excited to explore with you today. So I was inspired for this topic uh, because I remembered this, this experience I had when I was studying to be a scientist, where I went into the basement of this old museum. It's actually called the Harvard University Herbaria. And we went to the basement of this museum and in the basement of this museum, there were hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper with old dried plants glued to them. And I wondered why, why do they have all these immense numbers of plants? They're from all over the world, all over the world. And from a time when they used to have to travel by boat to go from continent to continent. So they're hundreds of years old. And why do they have all of the, why are they storing all of these plants glued to paper? And, I, and I've, I've actually kept that question with me, but why would you want to save plants? Does anybody have any ideas about saving plants? Matilda? Um, because you probably want to see how they evolved. Do you think that you can study the evolution of a, of, a, of a thing by taking different time points? I think that's a really good idea. So we have to figure out how to preserve specimens. And we sometimes make drawings of them. In the last lesson, we maybe made some drawings of some of the insects that we were looking at to sort of understand where they're coming from. But nature has a lot of other ways of, of, of preserving specimens. What's one way that we find living creatures years and years after they've died? We've seen many like creatures frozen, mainly like a, uh, mainly like a uh, microscopic things. We've seen those frozen over. Oh. We've seen, uh, ice caps melting. People have found more. Uh, so that is one way, making things super, super cold, freezing them. That's one way of preserving live specimens or the living bodies of living, living things. What are some other ways? We bury them outside so they stay there. Okay. Like in the winter or something, I just bury them in the snow. Okay. So bury, you could bury them in the snow or, yeah, save young. Um, we can probably see like their dead body, like their bones. Bones are made up of a different substance and it preserves really well in the rock record. So when you bury things under lots and lots of pressure and you leave them there for a really long time, they kind of, they turn into to fossils. It could be plants, it could be animals, right? It could be even footprints. You know, footprints can also be preserved. Um, but that's the way that nature can pre preserve it. We can actually learn a little bit from nature. So, right, burial and pressure and temperature, all of that helps scientists think about how are we going to preserve some specimens. Scientists have ways of keeping records. And we learn how to speak each other's languages, right? And we learn how the processes that each of us takes in order to preserve our, our specimen. And so, Scientists have left behind specimens. That's what all those people who filled the, the basement of the herbaria full of paper covered in, in, in dried plants. They had to learn how to preserve those, those dried plants. And then they had to learn how to label them, right? So that I can learn from their collections. So if you want to leave samples around for future people to learn from them, you have to learn how to make a really good collection. So I actually have a question that's unrelated to live samples could have live samples, but do any of you collect anything? Savion, what do you collect? Well, um, I don't really collect 
um those things, but I've seen them before. Okay, you've seen collections before, Maya. Um, I used to collect um rocks. So <laughs> yeah, but I don't anymore. Okay, so you may, may maybe you still have some rocks lying around from your collecting day. Ooh, I love that. And Grayson. Um. I kind of like go everywhere. I collect a lot of different things. Like, uh, I have a bunch of different like, I have like, mo like Hot Wheels that are like from like a long time ago that are still in like cases and stuff. Whoa! So model car. One that's like, I'm pretty sure there's only like 15 in the U.S. What? That's amazing. So you have some very rare samples that you take very good care of. You even leave them in the case. That's actually a really good note, how to keep these things from, from going bad. And Lauren, I see your hand. I collect some um, uh, Legos. I have a set from 2003. Whoa. And other sets that I got from my neighbor from like 2008 and stuff. Oh my goodness. That's wild. And do you keep the instruction set? Or do you just have the Legos themselves? Uh, most of the time you want to keep the instructions because if you don't, you'll have to use them online. And uh, sometimes the online ones are harder to use than the actual ones. That is right. Okay, Matilda, what do you, what do you like? Oh, I used to collect marbles. And then you can play games with marbles, right? Yeah. Hmm. But that's kind of a lost art. I haven't played it. I have never played a game with marbles before. Do you know how to play a game with marbles? Um, There's like something you can make to play with marbles. That's the only one I know. Okay, so you can make something to play with marbles. But, okay, so let's say we're future people. Find all these collections of objects, but we don't have any way. We don't have instructions from the Lego manuals. We don't know how to play the game with marbles. So scientists have to be able to put together what previous scientists collected, right? So you have to kind of write down specific instructions and maybe where you collected the rocks, right? Or how you put the Legos together. I was hoping what we could do is brainstorm ways to make our collections more scientific. Could we do that? So mm -hmm. everybody wants to grab a pencil and paper. You can write down, and you don't have to do it now, but we'll do it with, um, with the department teacher. Um, we can all go get pencils and papers and we're, we're going to write down the thing either that we want to collect or would like to collect. They can be biological or not. And ways, ways we can help future generations or other scientists understand what, why, and how you collected those items. So we're going to try and make our collections more scientific. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you something that I did inspired by those plants that I saw in the basement of that museum, but very available to me and very near and dear to my heart because I love flowers. Okay, so that's a little teaser. All right, um, so we will break.
Welcome back. So now, if everybody wanted to share the items that they are excited to collect, go ahead. Grayson? Well, I don't, it's not really saying I collect them, but I have a lot of medals. Can I show you guys? Yes, definitely show okay. us. I'll go get them. Great. I have a bunch of medals too. You have medals too, Savion? Yeah. How could you arrange them or make the collection of them a little bit more scientific? I don't really know because I have a lot and it's like super messy. Huh? They're super messy? And um, I get some for like doing different sports and some for school. All right. So maybe where you, where you got them from could help you arrange them, right? You say, these are the sports medal. Okay. And these are the other kinds of medals. All right. Do you, do you have them, Grayson? I, I was in the top um, 10 dancers for soloists. Oh, wow. And there was hundreds of people there. Wow. And I ranked top 10. I love that. And then that. my other one is for the same dance. It's a different one. This is, instead of, it says, act, it, this one says that I placed the top 10, but this one is my platinum that the, from the judges that oh, yeah. they, cool. So these are memories for you. They're also kind of cool artifacts to have for the future. I had a friend who made me a snapshot from her garden and she went out and she collected plant material from right outside of her window and she dried it and put it between two pieces of glass. And now I have it and they're still so bright and, and they're still very pretty. And I can see all these different sort of structures in them. And put them even under my microscope and observe them even closer. Should I do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's another thing about having specimens is that you can actually look at them closer for, for longer. And, and it's very lucky that we preserve specimens from the past that we can look at with modern technology and find and discover new things. This actually comes from a little piece of fruit, it looks like. Is that a berry? Maybe it's a berry, right? Those might be seeds, right? And then if we go over to this thing, this one's a smashed, maybe a piece of grass or something. Maybe, and on this light, we could see through the bottom. <laughs> When you see that, it's very hairy. Can you see all those fur, furriness on the, on the edges of the plant? Oh, yeah. I can look really closely and can see where she was at that time. I would imagine this is probably sometime in, in spring or maybe early summer when plants are, are having pushing, putting fruit out. She also gave me some, some flower petals. Ooh, flower petals. Mm-hmm. I love flower petals and look at that color. I collected this specimen just outside my house earlier today. And this right here, I'm gonna preserve for myself in the future. What do you think about flowers? They smell really good. They smell really good? Mm -hmm. yeah. What else do flowers tell us about our, our environment? They smell great, what else? Um, it's probably not like, um... It has probably good soil, you know. Mhm. Mm so they can be they can be indicators. If, if a if a plant is making flowers, it is shows us that there's there's enough nutrients for it. This is the flower that I just collected. What do we see? Does anybody want to make any observations? Go ahead, Savion. Um, in the flower, I see like white stuff like on the flower and everything. Okay, I see some white stuff as well. I see the petals. See the petals? And Maya, you had your hand up. Um, it's like going from purple to white. Yeah. Going some beautiful color patterns. I also see a little bit, when I go down towards the stem, can you see some of the... Uh... Okay. Oh, yeah. It's super uh, cool. uh, Huh? I can maybe even get a little bit closer. All of my way. I'm not there. It's very delicate little structures on that on that plant. All right. So this is one of those amazing things that observe closely observing flowers. That if I was able to preserve this, 
for future scientists. Maybe they would be able to compare that to flowers that they have in their, in, in, in their modern times. So what other moment when I realized that flowers were one of the coolest things to preserve was when I saw this amazing scientist talk about how they found a fossil with a bee preserved in it and a part of the flower called the pollen. And they found a fossil with the bee and the pollen in it. And so they could observe that under the microscope. Yeah, what's it again? Oh, um, a, a flower that like the pollen and everything. I used to have allergies of it. So seasonal changes can really affect humans and they're because of plants and they're because of these big cycles of change, right? One thing that I would love to show you at least under the microscope really quickly is a, a, a bee that I've preserved um, with some pollen in her basket. Scientists can also observe how, how plants interact with animals. So this is actually a really beautiful, this is the reason that I love bees is because they depend so much on flowers and flowers depend so much on them. And we care a lot about how, how bees live in this world and what, what they visit because a lot of the flowering plants that bees visit are, are plants that once, once they, the flowers are pollinated, they actually turn into fruits and vegetables and things that we eat, right? So observing this interaction between bees and flowers and imagining how these samples and how these specimens have changed over time really affects the way we think about and plan for the future. The way that plants are changing and the way that plants are responding to changes in our climate and the environment are really important to note. For those of you that might be interested in collecting flowers, I have a challenge for all of you. Can I play a video for you? All right. Hi, I'm Lee. And I'm Marina. We're both scientists at BioBus. Today, Marina and I are going to teach you how to find fallen flowers, prepare plant pressings. Not there! <laughs> you know what they say, April showers bring May flowers, but you might find yourself wondering why. Well, as the days grow longer, plants are exposed to more sunlight. A little bit of rain allows for more absorption of nutrients from the soil. All of these environmental factors trigger different responses in plants, like flowering and opening up petals for pollination. We're interested in what is blooming in your urban ecosystem this spring. As we do this, we want to make sure to disturb the ecosystem as little as possible. So we don't want to pick flowers that are already growing. We will only collect things that have already fallen. First step is to find a flower and try to figure out what plant it comes from. Maybe you take a picture of the tree or bush you think it fell from. So pretty! And if you can't go outside, you can also use the plants that you are growing on your windowsill. Last step is to mount and label it, take a picture, and send it into BioBus. You can make observations of its color, number of petals, or reproductive parts. A good way to keep track of this is by collecting and preserving fallen flowers in your neighborhood. Press that flower between two sheets of paper, weigh down with heavy books, and wait one to four weeks. Thanks for watching! <laughs> Submit your photos! See, See you, you next, next week! week. <laughs> but flowers are very special and they're really great, great to collect and they can be really fun um, gifts between, between friends, but preserving collections can be, is a great gift to other scientists. So I hope that you all enjoyed this and thank you so much for your time. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.